So if you look in the Networks folder, we're at a point where you can start to plan the, your, your project now. As I said, we're going to have some time to work on it. But if you look in Web Design folder, in our Class folder, inside of Topic 3, you can get a copy. You can print it later, not, not during the lecture because the printer is noisy. You can copy the Point and Click Game Project Topic 3. I forgot to write Topic 3 on it. But that's the Topic 3 project. Let's look at it. So let's see the requirements. All right, so after learning some action script, you have now the knowledge to create a point and click style adventure. Uh, you're going to use the character from topic one and topic two project, right? The model sheet and the, the movie that you made. So what we created together was a haunted house kind of game. Uh, you can probably figure out, and we'll have you'll have the time to figure out what kind of point and click adventure is your character going to go on. A lot of you that turned in your your work had an interesting story, and it was to be continued. Well, the to be continued part could be this: navigating the kitchen uh, after they left the store, doing else things. When they went to their cave, something else at the warehouse. What else happened? So all of you that had this sort of uh, plot going on, you can still make some sort of adventure game. Obviously here it's a haunted house and you die and all of that. Well, on yours, you, you don't have to, but there should be some requirements. And they're right over here. So you're going to create a folder for your project. You're, you're going to focus again on a project that is Air for Android. This could be actually set up and publishable on iOS hardware on an iPhone or iPad. Uh, we're not quite going to talk about it because the big downside with that is you need a lot more setup to be able to publish to the iPhones. And ultimately we are going to have an exercise eventually when this is all done, if you choose and if you really like your game, we'll, we're going to have an exercise where we're going to talk about actually publishing it for real to real websites or to even sell it as a real app on the real app stores. We'll talk about that after the assignment. But you'll have, you'll, you have to make sure you create an Air for Android project. Not the one that just says Action Script 3 or not the one that says HTML5. It needs to be Air for Android. You give it your last name. We're going to focus on a, uh, a landscape uh, game. So you'll need to change the dimensions of your project. 800 by 480. And then there's various settings that we looked at a while ago that we'll take another look at today. In the, in the settings of the project, we have, if you look at the project at the moment, you go to File, Android Settings. You haven't had to change much of it here once we set up the first time. <clears throat> but what you definitely need to change are these items up here eventually. These still say April 5th. So you'll need to change output file and app name. The app name is what appears below the icon of your game. So notice I am putting it a requirement here. You'll need to put you know, your last name on the APK file, app name, uh, whatever you want it to be. You can name your thing whatever you want. So Sarah and Dante, please let's wrap it up. App ID, right there, you're going to put a unique identifier and simply your last name and the name of your game. So in my case, it's got this weird name here. You're going to put your own last name dot the name of your game. So if you call it, you know, Happy Adventure, air dot your last name dot Happy Adventure. You can leave version and version label alone. You don't have to change those. If you want to, you could. But make sure that you've got aspect ratio set to landscape. Just because you set the properties over here to landscape, it's not going to be landscape unless you also set this. I saw this for a few people. Your project was a landscape. You forgot to set that. So these other items here, you can leave those alone. If I didn't mention anything in the handout, you don't have to change it. But if I mention something, you do have to change it.
in the deployment tab. Remember this part, we needed to create this certificate that shows that I'm the developer of this app, and you've been using probably mine, victor.p12. You'll need to go through the process of creating another one. It was pretty straightforward. If you need our help, you can ask us, of course. Create one with your name, your password, etc. It shows that you are the developer of your game, not me. What else you change on that screen is uh, remember to set air runtime right here. If you don't set this one and a person downloads your game, they won't be able to play it unless they also download the Adobe Air Runtime. So if you bundle it all together as one thing, the game plays right away. People like the game, give you five stars, and all that good stuff. Icons. This is one where I'm not going to walk you through this step by step. Uh, this works best if you have some experience in a graphic software like Paint or Photoshop or whatever you need to create some icons. My handout here says in the icons tab create icons in ping format with transparency for each of the sizes. They're listed right here. You'll need to make up icons for your your project in these dimensions. You then very easily select this icon, you then browse for the file and it adds it. That's it. This screen is very straightforward. What I will say, which may help you a lot in making these icons, is you can go to this website, uh, emoji1.com, and this is a set of like a thousand icons of emoji uh, that you can download high quality and open them up in Paint or Photoshop and change them how you want. If you ever played my example game, my icon on my example game has a little haunted house. I got it from here. So if you browse here, you'll see all of these icons. You can find an icon um, over on Emoji. And just click to download. So you have avocados and clowns and robots, all that stuff. So let's say I wanted to use a crown. You click on an icon. And there's going to be a button to to download it. So they're in different formats there. Instead of making up your own icons, you can go to emoji1.com, and there's lots of cool icons to get started. You can combine icons. You, know, you can get the crab icon and combine it with the spider web icon. It shows a new home. Or sharks are really cute. All of these icons. So um, that's that tab right there. There's that tab of what you need to do. You need to put icons in those formats so that your app has a nice icon. Permission tab. Now all of this is is when you start a brand new project, you need to make sure all of this is set. Permissions tab, uh, we activated this one so that your device, your app can actually communicate with the device. So you need to turn that one on. And what else? Language. And then you probably want to set your language. So my handout tells you what you need to set up on these different screens. You set up your own P12 file and you publish after your game is done. So the basic setup is all of this. The other further requirements that you'll be graded on are the following here. So create a point and click game about your character from the previous topics. They can be exploring a cave, a mansion, a swamp, whatever you want. You must have at least three, you must have at least these scenes. A title scene, you know, what's the name of your game? You can be as complex as you want. Remember, you still have the ability to do all this animation and tweens and movie clips and all that cool stuff. But some title screen that shows off what the game is about, the name of the game. Some sort of help or about scene where you explain how to play your game or you say a little bit about the backstory. You know, like my character, the space pirate, had just gotten to the cave where the riches are. Guide her throughout the 
the rooms to get the treasure. You know, I could do that as an about screen. Have at least one good ending, however you want to define that, and one bad ending, however you want to define that. And then at least three scenes in between the beginning and the end. You start the game, you end the game, and in between I want to see maybe three, three different rooms, three different scenes, things to do and to look at, to interact with. You can use any of the things that we learned in the class. I'm not saying you have to do everything that we did in the class. And if you look up tutorials, you know, how to blah, 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 action script three, you'll find plenty of code and tutorials out there. If you find extra code that we never talked about, fine, go ahead and use it. Make sure it works, because I'm going to test everyone's game, and I want to play it and have fun with it. So examples of what we learned Navigation from scene to scene, dragging objects with hit detection, dead end items meaning the painting. You interacted with the painting and it didn't really do anything, but it, you interacted with it. We had the random numbers. Those spikes kill you sometimes, sometimes they don't. So any of those things that we learned in the class, you can apply. You don't have to apply everything we learned in the class. Code-wise, that is. What you must have, code-wise, is the music working. Sound effects, as many as you want, for things that happen. Background music, at least one. You have one music playing throughout the whole game if you want. Obviously, it's more creative when you have different music. And your code must work that when you leave the game, the, the music shuts off and turns back on when you return to the game, like my example here. Right? You exit. It pauses, you start it again, it continues. That part should definitely work. It's required here. You're going to publish your file uh, through this process of the, of the deployment certificate. You're going to publish it. And if you notice inside of the folder that we've been working with, you have your FLA file. It creates the APK file. That's the file. That's the Android package file, that's what you upload, that's what we'll look at later, to upload to the real app stores for you to make real money off of your game. It also creates an HTML file, a Swift, an XML, and your P12. So basically all of the stuff in your folder, you're going to turn that in. You don't have to turn in your original music because the music is embedded in your flash file, FLA file. You turn in your work uh, in two weeks. All of that stuff, finished APK file, your original FLA supporting files. You don't need the music, it's embedded in your file. And uh, that is okay. You will turn in your folder, which includes all those things FLA, APK, and P12 files. If there's extra files, leave them there. You'll be graded on your ability to apply the concepts we learned on a game that features action script works. Just because the code is in there and it doesn't work, you don't get full credit. The code needs to work. We worked on it together. We helped a lot of people. The code worked. I'll give you an example of my code, but your version needs to work. It's worth 25 points. It's due on Monday the 8th, 10.30 a.m. Uh, I kind of want to demo them also, but I'm um, not sure how we can do that. I'll think about it. So, Monday the 8th, is when this is due. We're going to have the rest of the day for you to work. If you want to wrap up today and think about it and work on it later, great. But remember, we have we have this Wednesday a full day of work time. Then we've got the next Monday and Wednesday, the first and the third, and then it's due on the eighth. You can of course work on that on the weekend during lab time and all of that. But we have our days to work. And I do ask, obviously, if you stay in class to work, I want you to stay in class to work, not to chat about Rugrats. So let's please be on task about what we are doing in class. So that's the big idea about the topic three. Any general questions? Yes? Um, do you think it would be more efficient to do all of the animations in one I, I would recommend first have all the code working because that's the most frustrating part. The animations part could be really fun. So I would get the game working going from screen to screen very basically like we've got the whole game is in black and white and there's obvious click points. 
I want to get all the code working, and then I'll go back and refine the animation and the music and the transitions and everything. That's what I would recommend. Yes? What I would do is, is first focus on different parts of it. I'm going to put together some of that code and put it in the network folder in case people want to pick up something to take it because that's going to take you know another whole day for us to code it. So I'll look up some of that code and I'll give it to you guys. But it is doable. But I would focus that as a secondary thing compared to the first stuff that works. Any other general questions? Yes? Um, since we've been working on on this project the whole two weeks, do we have to be here or can we do anything here? You know, that's a good point. Um, we're not taking attendance anymore. Uh, so if you'd like to work on it elsewhere, great. You don't have to come in. You know, if you have a, if you're on a roll at home and you're working on it at home, great. You don't have to come in. Make sure you check your emails when I send out emails and all of that. But uh, you can come and work if you want. If you get our help and such, or you can work on your own wherever you want. All right. So that's it. I'll turn the printers on if you'd like a printed copy of that, and uh, I hope to see some really cool games. You guys are very creative, and like I said before, uh, I was very impressed with your animations, so I'll probably be very impressed with your games as well.